77 degrees Sunday night in Houston, Texas. It's clear, so the roof is open at NRG Stadium, home of the 6 and 3 AFC South leading Houston, Texas. And the reigning offensive rookie of the year, quarterback CJ Stroud, facing Jared Goff and the NFC leading Detroit Lions on NBC's Sunday Night Football. Lions best start since 1956. Trying to keep that going and trying to stay ahead of the Vikings for a half game back at the NFC North. Air Baron kick. Good hang time. The touchback Lions take over at the 30. Left. Williams and St. Brown to the right. Little shovel. And there goes Amon Ross St. Brown for the first down. And again, a seven to the 42 yard line up from the safety spot. Jimmy Ward, the tackle. Back across the grain, you're going to see the offensive line pulling out that way. So they make you believe everything's coming to the right. Flip it back underneath to I consider to be really the engine of this offense. Amon Ross St. Brown, he is the guy that would. Toss Mixon to the right, strung out and brought down. Play made by Brian Branch, the second year player who's been outstanding for Detroit this year. I tell you, well, we've seen some plays out of the secondary already. Brian Branch probably in a pretty foul mood after getting kicked out of the game a week ago against the Green Bay Packers for one of those helmet to helmet hits. And he comes out and makes a statement early in this one. Did Bo melt into the Packers? Second and eight, and they'll keep it on the ground with Nixon. Swung around by Carlton Davis. And the rest of the posse comes to get him with Branch and Josh Pascal. Big loss back to the 26 yard line. Minus eight on the carry. We all think of Carlton Davis in his days with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he is sort of that senior citizen out here amongst the secondary. So many young guys playing so well. Kirby Joseph, one of the safeties with six interceptions. Brian Branch with four. We talked about Robertson, the rookie, Terry on Arnold in the last few weeks. Third and goal, Dario Gumbawale is the back. Stroud waiting, scrambling, looking for something to get brought down. Terrific contain by the man who made a name for himself his rookie year, James Houston. Throws it in the middle and is caught twice to juggle. And Jamison Williams hangs on, makes a big grab to the 48 yard line, a gain of 24 as Williams returns to the lineup. That is some play right there. First ball by Jared Goff, right on the money. But for Jamison Williams, anytime you take a couple of days or weeks off because of the suspension, you got to come back in and prove to your teammates. That was a big second catch. 36, twisting pressure up the middle. There's the inside throw. Chris, you're all over it. And it's Jamison Williams again to the 36 yard line. Again, a 13, Detroit first down. You know, you think of sort of the dink and dunk and the way that they usually get this offense started. But for Jared Goff, he's coming out throwing fastballs down the field. And I'll tell you, Jamison Williams made a couple of nice catches. Now, that was tough. Behind him, in the clutch, big third down conversion. Lions have been terrific in this second frame, and there's a good run by Gibbs, 31-yard line to the formation. Empty on third and a long yard. Goff going to scramble for it. Jared Goff says, I got legs too. First down to the 25-yard line. They know who their quarterback is now. Gibbs for the gun run for five to the 20-yard line. Second and five. As the pocket got throwing towards the end zone, Laporta, touchdown, Detroit, Sam Laporta, Goff out of the pocket, finds his tight end, who's been a bit quiet, and the Lions <laughs> celebrate the score. One of the things Jared Goff has been working on is they want to make everything look like it's this outside zone play. And so when he fakes it, it looks like the run play, and that created a huge open success in Cincinnati to here in Houston. A little trickery to start this, and the Lions are all over it. Dell reverses field, 
and Tank minimizes the loss. It is a loss of six on the play. Yeah, you give one of these plays a shot every once in a while, and then you come back and you go, why did I do that, right? I mean, it, Detroit is so well coached. Named him a captain on Friday. Rare midseason. Stroud off the spot, on the run. He throws, broken up. Terrific break on the ball by Brian Branch at the last minute as Tank Dell was the intended receiver. Man, just like a corner team. Inside get it, Vixen and McNeil was there and then they push him to the edge of field goal range. We'll see where the mark comes. They'll probably stop his forward progress around the 39, 40 yard line. Let's see where they mark him. I'll determine if it's in Fairbairn's range. Utter dominance by Aleem McNeil. It's game after game, time after time. He's a guy that maybe the general football fan in the country, they don't know his name, but he is the most significant player on this defense. And Stroud escaping. Now throws on the run to the back of the end zone. Incomplete for Robert Woods, the veteran. This drive will begin at the 33. Stroud is pressured and he's trapped and throws nearly intercepted by Nowoski. Question is going to be was his knee down for a sack back at the 21 yard line. It's very close. For the moment being ruled an incomplete pass, I believe. Ooh, I don't know. I think that knee hit. Yeah. Yeah, it should be a sack. He's figuring it out. Throwing oh. towards Hutchinson, Lions all over it with Amik Robinson. The nickel, so you see Petrie make all these plays. I'm going to weigh in from the nickel spot on my own. Look at Aaron Glenn fired up as his defense got a three and out to take us to the two minute warning. What do you want to see from your defense in the second half? Listen, we get. We have one error here or there. If we cut that out, we'll be fine. And then we got to have takeaways. Our defense has to get a couple of takeaways. We're not going to get it all at one chunk here. So just one at a time. We'll do that. We'll play this out until we get two minutes left in the, in the fourth quarter before we turn on. But we'll do it. Okay, man. He said it. They had to get takeaways, and they do right out of the gate. The most valuable coaches interview ever. Here's there, Carlton Davis with the pick. In the history of television, <laughs> has that ever happened? Never. The coach is telling the sideline reporter, Melissa Starks, that he needed a takeaway, and during the conversation, it happened. <laughs> that was awesome. Carlton Davis, the old veteran, we talked about him, right? This is the old head back there. He listened to coach, and now all of a sudden, this game just feels different. Does that pick turn into something? Montgomery running hard. David Montgomery. Yeah, here it does again. Do you think some paint came off the wall in the Lions locker room at halftime? Uh, I, the defensive lineman Fadakasi out. Kurt Heinisch in. Goff play action protected. Downfield shot. LaPorta's got it. The tight end inside the five. First and goal. They protected. Challenge downfield. Eric Murray and LaPorta. A big game. So the same play, right? They're going to bootleg this way. They scored a touchdown last time going that way. This time they go that way, and they get just enough space, create a little move to the outside, back across the field. We used to see the Saints do that all the time. Big time play here to get the Lions going. 37 on that one, 66 on the night from Laporta. First and goal, Detroit trying to get back in it with Montgomery to the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. So the Lions come out and their defense get a turnover, get a stop, give the offense the ball twice in good field position. Look out. Stroud, end zone, under thrown and intercepted. Carlton Davis comes up with the pick. Man was open early. Stroud gets it there late and celebration over by some of the Lions fans with. Davis who comes up with another big play on this night. Turnover filled, sixth turnover of this game. Pretty play by Davis to go up. Game of his career. Quick toss, Jameer gives it. Penny Sewell leading the way. <laughs> Almost got that corner turned. He's going to 
very close to that first down, have it at the 32 yard line. All right, anytime you need to get something going, this guy right here leads the way, and people find a way to avoid him. This is the old business decision here, and he's still looking. He's opened up his window off of injured reserve. Hopefully, we'll have him back in a few weeks. Trouble here, and McNeil comes up with the sack of Straddle. Lee McNeil having a very good game. Another loss of 10 yards. Man, this is a huge play here because so many times C.J. Stroud will make this defensive tackle miss. You can see the other defensive tackle never got off the line of scrimmage. And so if Stroud, oh, now Ali McNeil's down on the field. Third down, Goff swings it. Gibbs, Sewell leading for him. Gibbs looking to cut back inside all the way to the 44-yard line. 33 on the game. First down, Detroit with Jameer Gibbs. Boy, every once in a while, your coach needs to come up with something. Here we go. We're going to pull out in front of it. And just as that edge player starts to figure out, uh-oh, we've got a problem and we've got a lead blocker in front. And that was greatly needed. That was just a tremendous call that time by Ben Johnson. Texans face third and nine. Lions bring pressure, it's picked up, and Branch breaks up the pass intended for Xavier Hutchinson. Incomplete, and Houston will kick it away. We are seeing Brian Branch play one unbelievable game. Not only is he involved in the run game and making big hits, but when you have a safety, a safety that can play in the slot and make plays like that, he has been sensational. We talked about Fodokazi out now for the remainder of the game. Goff play action throws in the zone. It's held on to by Jamison Williams. Tough catches, three on the night. And the 33, Goff setting up the screen. Montgomery's got blocker. Montgomery at the numbers 20. Montgomery cuts inside to the 10. Still on his feet. Out of bounds at the nine-yard line. That's 24 for Montgomery at first and goal. Lions back in this one. Watch the offensive line get out in front of this thing, but I'll say it again. When things are beginning to feel uncomfortable, there's two guys, Amon Ross St. Brown and David Montgomery, that have a tendency to wake this team up. The physical nature of what they're trying to build in this offense, in this defense, in this organization, really personified in those two guys. First and goal from the nine. St. Brown on the edge. Got blockers. Up and around St. Brown. Touchdown Detroit. Lions right back in it. I don't like anything at this dinner so far tonight, but I'll take a double helping of David Montgomery and Amon Ross St. Brown, the Detroit Lions officially awake, active, and in this football game. And who's out blocking there, Chris? Penny Sewell again. One of the best athletes and at least one of the two or three best tackles in all of football. Jake Bates for the extra point. Snap wasn't great. Good job by Fox to get it down. Stroud, pressure on from Houston, got away from him, almost runs into a sack, and now the ball comes out, and it's free, and the Texans fall on it, almost like his own player may have helped cause the fumble. In any case, the Lions brought the pressure, and the Texans will punch it away. We talked about James Houston, his energy, changing positions. Watch how many times he has a shot here. First one goes by, keeps hustling, keep working. Get after it out there, and then able to come back around and punch that football out. And for C.J. Stroud, can't lose the game, right? Next Sunday night, Lions down three. Jameer Gibbs, first down run. First down, Gibbs down the sideline he goes. And out of bounds. A good opener for Detroit, trying to tie or take the lead. A little misdirection. They're going to show this way to get linebackers to move there. And then you're going to see Gibbs go back that way. So a lot of times when you get a team that's really flying to the football, you use their excitement and their momentum against them, especially in big moments of the game. 
Longest run of the night for the Lions, a gain of 15. 32, Goff, St. Brown. Round nine, Marbari Lasseter out for the rest of the game for Houston. Gibbs, right, accelerates. There goes Gibbs down the sideline. And the big chunks of yards happening now for the Lions. To the 39-yard line with that one. Gain of 20. We talked about Panay Sewell, one of the best tackles in all the game. He's so athletic. Watch what he does here. Able to go and hook the edge player who's at least seven yards outside of him. You just cannot find offensive linemen and offensive tackles to do that. And then when you make that block, look out. All right, back to Gibbs. This offensive line stepping up in the second half for Detroit. Jake Bates is from this area. One year ago, he was selling bricks in Houston, Texas. A month later, got a chance at the UFL tryout, made it there, kicked there, earned the job at the Lions from 58 to tie the game. Bates just inside the upright, ties it at 23. Wow. field goal in Lions history. They ain't work with bricks anymore. <laughs> New game at 23. The most 50 plus in one year. We're only halfway through. Lions going for pressure inside. Miami Fairbairn for the lead from 58 yards away. It is wide left. Not close. The Lions will take over at the 40 yard line. In the left side of Goff. Goff sets, throws. It is caught by St. Brown for the first down at the 37 yard line. Shades of the clincher against the Rams in the wild card game in Detroit last year when they have a gotta have it moment. It's 16 to 14. Watch how patient Amon Ross St. Brown is coming down. Just taking his time. He knew what he had to get done. A little late move. Create that separation. And now back in his hometown, he's got a 52-yarder for a come-from-behind win for the Agents. For 52 for the win. It is just good. Just inside the upright. Jake Bates, hometown hero. And the Lions have come on. A remarkable victory, 19 unanswered points for the second time in this now seven-game win streak. Bates is the hero, and he does it back in his hometown. Mike, I'll tell you one thing. It's a good thing they didn't put an extra coat of paint on these uprights <laughs> because we have seen them slide by all night long one more time. What a football game.